So in today's video, I'm going to be explaining on the topic of what is self-deliverance and whether or not you should do self-deliverance or go seek deliverance from either a fellow Christian or a deliverance minister. So let's get started. I do want to preface this video by stating that as Christians, we're technically all called to do deliverance. And we can actually find this information in the Bible in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 to verse 8. Now, this is the Amplified Bible, but it states, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. So what Jesus is essentially saying in this passage is that as Christians, we're instructed to first preach the gospel. You know, we have to give people the good news. Second, we have to lay hands on the sick. That's why those two examples were of cleanse the lepers and raise people from the dead. Those fall in the healing categories. And then the third is cast out devils, which is deliverance. So that just brings me back to the point that as Christians, we are called to do that. We are all called to do deliverance, but not all of us are called to go into a deliverance ministry. There is a difference between going, being called to go into a deliverance ministry and doing deliverance, you know, but that's a topic for another video. But anyways, going back to what I was saying, now that we're all on the same page here and we all under, have that understanding now, as it states in the Bible, you know, that we're actually, as Christians, we are called to do those three things. And one of those things is deliverance. So that in turn leads us to the question, what is deliverance? Now, I'm actually just going to give you a quick rundown of what deliverance is. But if you want to know more, then you guys can check out my video, which I'll leave on the top right, where I basically go into detail explaining what deliverance is. And so what is deliverance? Well, deliverance is the process of setting uh, somebody free from either demonic oppression or on the few instances a demonic possession so those two things fall under the category of or fall under the umbrella of deliverance now I also want to make a clear distinction here and make it very clear that as Christians now I'm talking about as Christians real people you know like real Christians people that have actually have a relationship with God um, we can't have uh, we can't be possessed so I do want to make that clear distinction. We can't be possessed since we already have Holy Spirit residing in us. But there are a lot of people, unfortunately, that call themselves Christians, yet they have no relationship with God. They've never given their lives to Christ and they've never accepted Holy Spirit to reside in them, right? They've never accepted Holy Spirit. They have no relationship. You know, these are just people that have said that, oh yeah, you know, these are just, I guess, lukewarm Christians that have never really been truly saved, you know? And so in those few examples, those Christians, since they don't have Holy Spirit residing in them, they can technically be possessed. So that's why I stated that possessions don't always, it's not a common occurrence. It only happens in few instances. And in those instances is either if you're praying for somebody that's completely lost, or if it's, like I said, a Christian that's not really a Christian, but they but they think they are. And so that's when, you know, you could have a a problem with possession. That's a topic for another video, but like I said, I'm just giving you a quick rundown here. So I highly recommend you guys go watch that video on deliverance after watching this one. Now, the other thing I'd like to mention too, is that if this is our first time meeting, my name is Edder and I've actually been a part of the deliverance ministry ever since I was 15 years old. And so, and that is what the Holy Spirit has called me to do. I am called to do a deliverance ministry. Like I stated before, there is a difference between just a general Christian that's supposed to do deliverance. Like I said, we're all supposed to be, we're all called to do deliverance, but not all of us are called into the deliverance ministry. But like I was stating, yeah, so I've been in the deliverance ministry ever since I was 15. I Now, I did do my first deliverance when I was actually 18. And sure enough, or funny enough, it was actually a possession. That was actually my first time that I actually did a deliverance and it turns out it was a possession. So it, it's funny that, you know, we're just talking about how possessions are rare instances, but yeah, that, that was my first, <laughs> my first encounter into the deliverance kind of world, I guess. The other thing that Holy Spirit has also called me to do is he's also given me the gift of interpreting dreams. And so that I've also been doing since I was 15. Um, that's when I basically figured out that Holy Spirit, as soon as I hear a dream, Holy Spirit gives me the interpretation 
of that dream right away. And so that's basically what I talk about on this channel. And so if you are receiving value by watching this video, then it would actually really help out if you guys could drop a like, since it actually does help this video reach more people. And so yeah, thank you so much. And also consider subscribing. Now going back to what I was talking about, I do want to mention just one last thing uh, regarding the topic of deliverance before we start getting into the self-deliverance topic. Um, deliverance is a spiritual battle. Since you're essentially going on the offensive on behalf of the person that's getting delivered. So it is a given that when you do get into a spiritual battle that you are going to get spiritually counter, you know, there is going to be a counterattack from the enemy. And so that's basically what a deliverance is, is that you're basically doing a spiritual battle on behalf of the person that that's getting delivered since the person obviously doesn't know how to do this by themselves. And like I said, since it is, since you can expect a spiritual counterattack, that's why going to a deliverance minister or having a fellow Christian do deliverance on you is, is something I recommend, especially if we're talking on the topic of baby Christians. So that, that's basically deliverance. Deliverance is spiritual warfare. Okay, so now that we have a very quick, like I said, a quick rundown and a quick understanding of the core concept of what deliverance is now we're going to go to the topic of the video which is what is self-deliverance and we're also going to be answering the question do i recommend self-deliverance to every christian so self-deliverance is is that we're not going to a deliverance minister and we're not asking a fellow christian to to help us do the deliverance we're actually doing that whole process by ourselves so you can see the issue here because like I stated, when you're doing deliverance, you're going to be going into spiritual warfare. That is what you're doing. But if you're going to be doing that by yourself, then here is the topic of today, right? Do I recommend that to everyone? Well, the answer to that is no, I don't recommend that to everyone. The reason is, is because if you haven't, so going back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the video, you remember how I stated that as Christians, we're instructed to, to preach the word, to lay hands on the sick and to cast out demonic spirits. Those three things is what Jesus instructed us as Christians. So essentially, that is the definition of a Christian. You know, if you're not doing those three things or you've never done any of those things, you've never laid hands on the sick, you've never preached the good, the good news, and you've never cast out uh, devils, well then that would actually put you in the lukewarm category of a Christian or how I like to call it, um, the comfortable Christian. Or some people also call it the baby Christian. And it has nothing to do with, oh, well, I've been in church since I was five years old and now I'm 80 years old. You know, I've attended every Sunday service. No, that's not what being a Christian is. What being a Christian is, is that you have to be saved. Well, number one, you have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and accept that he's actually died for all of our sins. And second, you also have to have a relationship with Holy Spirit. And third, as a Christian, we should be doing, like I stated, we like it says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 through 8, we have to be doing those three things, preaching the word or preaching the good news. Um, laying hands on the sick and casting out devils. If we're not doing that, then that means, unfortunately, we have no relationship with God and we're, like I, like I said, like how I like to call it, then you fall into the category of being a comfortable Christian. And so if that's the case, if that's where you are, if you're watching this and you've never done those three things, well, then that means it doesn't matter how many years you've been in, at church. I've met several Christians that have been at church since they were five years old. They're in their 80s and they have no relationship with God. They have no wisdom from Holy Spirit because they have no relationship with Holy Spirit. And so if that's the case, then that just then basically what that means is, is that as a Christian, they've literally just plateaued. They've been plateaued, they haven't advanced, they haven't gone to level two, level three. You know how, you know, personally, I kind of see it like a mountain. You know, as Christians, we should always be striving to get, because what is what is being a Christian? Well, a Christian is us trying to be like, like Christ. We're trying to be more and more like him. And so each and every day, we should be growing our relationship, learning more by reading the word of God, 
reading the Bible is that's basically what I'm saying is we should be growing and growing and climbing that mountain. Our, our relationship with Holy Spirit should be better than it was yesterday. And so the thing is, is that if you're one of those Christians, those comfortable Christians, it means that you haven't, you haven't been climbing that mountain. You've just been stuck at the base of the mountain. And if that's the case, then I do not recommend that you do self-deliverance. I don't recommend self-deliverance to comfortable Christians. And by that, I mean baby Christians, lukewarm Christians. You can pick whichever term you want to use. But I do not recommend it to baby Christians because you have no relationship with Holy Spirit. And since deliverance is spiritual warfare, you need, as a Christian, you need to have, number one, you need to have a relationship with Holy Spirit and also know your authority in Christ. And as baby Christians, baby Christians, they don't, they don't have those things. If you're in that category, then I do not recommend that you do self-deliverance. Why? Well, the reason is, is that you could actually make the problem worse. Now, how can you make the problem worse? Well, first things first, deliverance isn't something that you just go in all willy-nilly, guns blazing, I rebuke you, uh, d demonic spirit. No, deliverance is not something, it's not a funny subject. You know, there, there are people that can die by doing deliverance. It's a serious topic. And there's a clear example of this in the Bible, which I'm actually going to read right now because you guys have to know this. So we actually find this in Acts chapter 19, verse 13 to verse 16. This is the Amplified Bible. Then some of the traveling Jewish exorcists also attempted to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I implore you and I solemnly command you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches, seven sons of one named Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. But the evil spirit retorted, I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus, and I know about Paul, but as for you, who are you? Then the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped onto them, <laughs> leaped, <laughs> leaped onto them, and subdued all of them, and overpowered them, so that they ran out of, out of the house in terror, stripped naked and wounded. So, what happened here in Acts is that those Jewish exorcists, you know, they literally got, you know, they got, they got their butts kicked by these demonic spirits. And luckily, they didn't get killed. And so this is what I'm saying is, is that deliverance is not something that you just get involved with all willy nilly. You know, it's a serious topic and people can die, especially if you don't know what you're doing. You don't want to just be calling, uh, you know, demonic spirits and doing that kind of stuff. You know, it's 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 not something you want to play around with. It's like playing with fire. You don't want to do that unless, like I said, you have those two things where you have a strong relationship with Holy Spirit and you know your authority in Christ. If you don't have those things and you're a comfortable Christian, you could get seriously hurt as as was demonstrated in this passage in the Bible. You know, these Jewish exorcists got got kicked, they got hurt, it says they got wounded. They were literally stripped naked. This thing was just, it pounced on them. When people are demonically possessed, you know, they have, you know, they, they have the strength of more than six men. And so imagine having, imagine these poor Jewish exorcists that tried to use the name of Jesus and literally got beaten up, you know, <laughs> they got beaten up by demonic spirits. So that just goes back to my point that I, I don't recommend self-deliverance if you're a comfortable Christian. If you're a baby Christian and you haven't done those three things that I stated, that you've never, you've never preached the, the word of God, you've never laid hands on the sick, and you've never cast out devils, and you have no relationship with God, and and you know you you don't know your authority in Christ, then you should not be doing self deliverance. I would recommend that you would go and get deliverance from a deliverance minister or a fellow Christian that is, and by Christian, obviously, I mean a seasoned Christian that does know his authority in Christ so that they can help you get rid of demonic spirits. And so that's that's basically the answer to the video. Yeah, so, I, so the only time I recommend self-deliverance is to people that are seasoned Christians and that have those two things, that have that those, those two understandings 
of, uh, of, yeah, like I said, knowing their authority in Christ and having a strong relationship with Holy Spirit. So if you guys have received value on the topic of what is self-deliverance, then yeah, it would be much appreciated if you guys could leave a like. These videos take a long time to script and also to make since, like I said, there's a ton of information and I'm trying to condense it so that it's easy, easily di digestible for you guys right on YouTube. Since this could easily be like hours, hour long preachings or even more, but I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to condense all the information so that it's, it's quick and easy to watch. And like I said, expect to see more videos on this on this topic of deliverance. And the last thing I want to mention is, is that everything that I stated in this video, and not just this video, but in all my videos, I always recommend that people that they take the information and that they confirm with Holy Spirit to see if what I'm saying is the truth. Now, the reason I say this is because on one end of the spectrum, you shouldn't just believe everything that I'm saying and take it as 100% fact. And the other end of the spectrum, you shouldn't just dismiss everything that I'm saying just because you don't like my hair or you don't like my face. You know, no, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, you should always confirm with Holy Spirit to see if what I'm saying is the truth. Since Holy Spirit is our counselor, right, as it states in John chapter 14, verse 26, uh, through verse 28. So counsel with him. But in any case, thank you so much everyone for watching my video and God bless.